All right, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And this is Shir Shalom to all the Akim out here that's doing and pushing the work in truth and in sincerity. All right, I got Brother Kashap, you know, right. from uh, G GMS DC Camp. Uh, GMS Custos. Yep, GMS Custos. Right. Okay. And we we gonna go through with the spirit, man, about how uh, you know the, the the barter system, the history of the barter system, how it changed from being actual livestock, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, you know, gold, silver, okay, cattle, cattle and um, okay. to 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 being uh, credit, okay, to what we have nowadays, which is the uh, FRNs, okay, which that's been uh. uh about to collapse any moment now. That's right. You yeah. know it's about to be done away with. Right. Like the reason why, uh, the reason why this, uh, these FRN notes are getting ready to collapse is because those are not just weights. And um, you know we're gonna get some scriptures uh, to break it down to you through the spirit of how Yahweh Bashim El Shai and show you that the Heavenly Father deals with just weights. Just weights means what? Equal, not equal, uh, a perfect trade. You know that's what the Lord balance trade. That's what the Lord deals with. So if the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father believes that if you give a man something, so ye must receive a, a, a just weight in exchange. Now these FRN notes or these dollars, they're not real exchange, man. They're really not. And that's the reason why you see this economy collapsing and you see the debt, that your debt rising and rising because what? When you're not dealing with just weight, now you start dealing with what? You start dealing with credit. And credit means that what? You you say it, you tell somebody that you got the money that you got uh, the, the the product, but when you really don't, you're just showing a paper that says that you got the product, yeah. and that's not that's not a, a, a just way, and that's the reason why it's a false balance. Right. The scripture said false balance and abomination to the Lord. So uh, what's going on? The, uh, the word okay. the, the Genesis. definition for yeah, Genesis, the word. Right. Genesis uh, thirteen and uh, two. Let me get it to the scriptures. Yep. Uh, Genesis uh, 13, 13 and uh, 1, it says, And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with them into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. Okay? That's right. Now, yeah, absolutely. Abraham was rich in um, silver he was, he was rich in, uh, like it was said he was rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Those were substance. Because if you're doing trade, you're supposed to do trade with substance. You, you're not supposed to do trade with, hey, you give me this, and I'm going to give you a paper that says that I'm going to give you that. Right. So if I'm giving you something, you must have what? You must have a trade, an equivalent trade to what I'm giving you. And it has to be just weight. That, that's what it means to have substance. Now, back in the ancient times, which we're going to go into the barter system, the barter system and trades in the economy was based on actual substance. It wasn't based on the illusion of substance. It wasn't based on, you got my word that I got the substance. Yeah. Because your word is your word. Back then in the ancient times, yeah, a man's word was bond, but still, a man were wicked. So, you didn't, you, yeah, you can take a man's bond and shake hands, so to speak, but it doesn't mean he's going to give you the thing that he owes you. Right. That's why the trades went with what? Substance to substance. Right. The uh the definition for the word barter, which I'm gonna get to um Merriam Webster, because that's like the best one <laughs> to get uh definitions from. Uh the Merriam Webster word for uh uh barter, right? It says to trade by exchanging one commodity for another. There you go. To trade goods or services in exchange for other goods and services. That's right. Right? And that goes into, like, you know, the men of the Lord, you know, you know, they did put their, you know, the Lord cursed, uh, you know, Adam, you know, that you would have to, you know, from the sweat, you know. That's a part of the curses, man, that, you know, we would have to go through, yeah. you know, in order to, to, to get what we had, you know, have. You know, like when you go through, um, like, uh... The, the woman, you know, woman was, you know, raised up, you know, woman was, was considered a commodity, man, right. you know, back then. And and men paid 
uh, money, you know, shekels, okay, to try to get with a woman back then. That's right. You know, they still do it nowadays, you know, uh, which is not shekels anymore. It's the FRN to get with these women. And that's off. Yeah. That, that's off because the FRN is it's just pieces of paper that says that this is how much I have. But we all know that these FRN notes are not backed by gold or silver. Right. And America really economically, America started when did when did America start to go down economically? America started to go down economically when the dollar was no longer backed by what? By gold. Mm -hmm. But America was at its highest economically yeah. when that when that dollar was backed by gold. Yeah. That uh, because, at, because at the time it was just wait, if I get right. the scripture, but like it, like it. Right, no problem. This is um this is Proverbs chapter 16 and 11. Proverbs chapter 16 and 11 says, A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. So it's important. The Lord say a just weight. So when you, a just weight is what? We're talking about a substance. A just substance. You can't, I can't have services. I can't do stuff for you. And then in return, you give me a piece of paper with no value. That's right. unjust weight. And according to the scripture, that's an abomination to the Lord, man. Right. Meaning whoever is whoever is bringing the unjust weight on the other side, that person is going off. And that person's goods and that person's economy will what will fall. Because the Lord would not allow that person to continue in his riches. Now, although Esau has continued in those riches, the Lord said in Job 20 and 4 that what? The triumphant of the wicked is but for a moment. You know? Yeah, I'm glad that you made that point about the, um, you know, about uh, things was being backed up with gold, you know, because that's what that's what you know, like if you had fruit, you know, you could you could barter fruit, okay, you could trade your fruit, okay, which it might be an exotic fruit or spice or something like that, you know, for uh, something that another person has, that's right. you know, but if that person that like let's say he already got the fruit. Or something like that, you could back back it up with gold mm -hmm. or or silver, you know, because that at the end of the day it had a it had a a, a price on it. Well, you know, and not only that, because bro, if you're giving me gold and silver immediately on the spot, I can go and I can I can actually purchase and I can continue to do trades with the yeah. gold and silver you gave. Yeah. But if you give me paper that says that okay, this paper represents gold and silver. Well, guess what? I can't go and trade. I might not be able to go and trade with another person because that other person, that other individual is not going to respect that note that I have in my hand. He's going to be like, hold up, you giving me a piece of paper. Right. That's that's what? That's unjust weight, man. And, you know, through spirit, power, you hold by Shemel Shah, the Lord is teaching us as the kingdom of Yahweh Shah, the kingdom of Yahweh Shah is being established. We also, no, no, we understand it now that the money system is going to be changed. The money system, the trading system, is going to go back to a barter system because now it's credit, it's credit based, which is total wickedness, you know. And we're going to, you know, bring a little bit of history. Right now, we're going on the barter system, and then low one and two spirit, we're going to bring a little bit of history on the credit system. You'd be surprised at some of the places where the credit system came from, right? Yeah. But it's all Esau, you know. That's a, ultimately it's Esau that started that, you know, that that. But well, Jake started it. But Esau took it and, and, and ran with it. Yeah, when you go into um, like when you said about the uh, the the, the just weights mm -hmm. are um, you know uh, righteous. Can you repeat that scripture if you got it, Brother Kasha? Uh, this is uh, Proverbs sixteen and eleven. It says, "A just weight and balance are the Lord's." Yeah, when you go into the um, the just weight, right? Because mm -hmm. back then it was it was called talent. That's right. You know, and right. it says a talent. Is an ancient unit of mass, right? It corresponded generally to the mass of water in the volume of amphora or one foot cube, right? Mm -hmm. Then it says the Babylonians and Sumerians, right, which we was under, yeah. right, yeah. captivity, had a system in which there were 60 seconds and a minna and 60 seconds, I mean, 60 minutes and a talent, mm -hmm. okay? It's, it says that the Roman talent consisted of 100 libra pounds, right. okay? Now, uh, it says when used as a measure of money, it refers to a talent weight of gold or silver, okay? Go. So, 
when 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 uh they would uh weigh the the, the the um the gold or the silver, they would check to see whether it was actual because you got something thing a thing called fool's gold. Yeah. You know. And that's what the just weight is about because a lot of uh, when you go into the history, um, during the decline of the, the Roman Empire, what uh the Romans used to do with uh their currency, I think it was uh the denarius, if I'm not mistaken. What they used to, when they used to do with their currency, they used to actually, in in in, in the simplest term, they used to water down their currency, which in today's time means what devalue the currency. You know what I'm saying? So the weight of silver, what they would do, they would actually instead of a hundred, uh, 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 instead of silver being just one hundred all silver, they mm -hmm. would have fifty percent silver and mm -hmm. fifty percent clay. Yeah, and that's not the same weight, man. But see, but it was still weight. Though that the exchange has been 100% silver. See, and that's a lot of the money changes. Remember when Yahweh Shah lost his mind on Jake in the temple, the money changes, because they were doing that. Right. They wasn't, they wasn't doing what? Just wait. They wasn't putting up just wait to change the money. They were stealing, man. They were devaluing the, the money and eating on Jake, man. So yeah. Yahweh Shah seen that, he seen that corruption, that abomination. That's when he lost his mind, man. Yeah. yeah if I could get this out. Yeah. There's a little bit more information on how much the weight of uh of gold and stuff used to cost. I mean, uh, B. It says um the gold talent right is reported as weighing roughly the same as a person, right? Mm -hmm. Now, continuing on, it goes down. It says the price of gold was about uh, U.S. dollars one thousand one hundred and ninety uh, dollars per troy ounce one gram cost about 38 dollars at this price a talent which was 33 kilo kilograms would be worth about 1.25 million dollars so back then a talent of gold was 1.25 million dollars mm. nowadays they have devalued the, the dollar bill i mean yeah. the dollar bill you know the the, the gold yeah to, to, to bend a thousand dollars. Yeah, which is absolutely ridiculous. Which is absolutely ridiculous because think about this. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, the reason when we go to Genesis 13 and 2, Yahweh Bashim Al Shah is pretty much letting you know that the standard for riches is gold, silver, and cattle. Mm -hmm. And that standard should not diminish or should it go above what it's supposed to be. So why do you have Esau? constantly telling you that hey the price of gold is going down the price of silver is going down yeah. i'm like hold up the price of gold should remain the same that's the standard when it comes to what substance or weight so back in the ancient time during in the barter system you know it was it was it remained the same every other thing that needed to be traded had to come up to the gold and silver so you had to keep adding to whatever you wanted to trade for the gold and silver you know so your 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 substance had to add up to the gold and silver. But now in this wicked and all uh, uh, society, the gold will fall back down to your stock or to your pocket. That's off, man. That's off, man. But see, that's Esau's system. It's based on corruption, man. Uh, I got a uh, preset. Uh, this, uh, this is like, this is Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 25 and 15. Now let's go to the law. This is Deuteronomy 25 and 15. It says, But thou, so I, uh, I'm going to start it, you know what? I'm going to start it uh, 13. Deuteronomy 25 and 13. Thou shalt not have in thy bag diverse weights, a great and a small. It says, Thou shalt not have in thine house diverse measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thou days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. And, and you got to understand the diverse weight, the diverse weights that are great and small, it's not saying, oh, you can't have, you can't have two ounces of gold and then one ounce of gold. It's not talking about, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about what? devaluing having having false change that's what it's talking about having false change because what and i'm gonna give you a good example man i was i had all 
I had this, the, you know, the bow flex machine, right? Mm -hmm. The little bow flex that you work out. And I got a brother that can attest to that. So I was trying to sell the joint. So the nigga comes, I sold the joint for like, like $100. Mm -hmm. I think it was either $80 or $100. So the nigga, you know, the nigga comes with the, with the tow truck, um, uh, with, the, with the truck to pick up the item. Right. So he hands me a bunch of uh, uh, $20 bills, right? So I'm like, all right, cool, you know, shake his hand, whatever. The nigga grabs the, uh, the bow flex, leaves, and then I look, brother, you know what I saw? Because I sold it, I think, yeah, I sold it for 80. I think I sold it for 80. You know what I saw, bro? I saw 60 real 20s and one fake 20. I'm like, this <laughs> nigga is mad me. It was supposed to be $80, yeah. but actually he gave me 60, but, but he yeah. had a fake 20 in the midst. Yeah. That's what the Lord is talking about. Mm -hmm. Where he had what he had diverse weight. Yeah. He yeah. had so that's what the that was wicked what he did. And yeah. I put curses on that nigga, man. Yahweh Bashim Al Shah gonna deal with that nigga, man. Yeah. But but that's what the Lord is talking about. So that you have you, you what? The scripture said, let me read it again. Deuteronomy 25 and 15. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened. Why? Because that wicked deed that he, that he did, the whole boss and I shall go put him to death for that, man. Yeah. He didn't know. He don't know who the hell he did that to, man. Yeah. You know, we men of the Lord. I'm selling you an item, and you telling me you got eighty dollars, and you put sixty real dollars, and you put that fake twenty in the bottom, and then you all ass. Yeah, he supplanted you. He supplanted me. <laughs> that's what he did. Hey, brother, you got to be man enough to. Hey, that's yeah, a nigga yeah, for you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nigga. He supplanted me, yeah. but that's that. But guess what? It's through the spirit. Cause now I can bring that example yeah, yeah. to break down what your whole Bashim Al Shah is really talking about when he means what he means by diverse weights and diverse measures. Yeah, yeah, God, yeah, the niggas is they, they gotta go, man. Right. You know, um, I got that scripture on you for you about yeah. um when you said your Shah um went to the temple. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is uh Matthew twenty one and uh twelve. And Yahweh Shah went into the temple of Yahweh and cast all, out all of them that sold and brought in the temple mm. and overthrew the tables of the money changers. Right? Hey, mm -hmm. Because, hey, uh, we got we to gotta say this. <laughs> uh, back in uh, ancient Rome, okay, now the, the, the price of uh, silver was already diminished from the the, the 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 price that it was already ready. You know, it wasn't what it what it said, uh hold on. And that the the, the talent a price of silver back then would have been uh worth about sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, in Rome it probably would have been, you know, cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. You know? But back in uh ancient Rome, which I forgot what the um with the uh the coin was in Rome? I think it was uh, the you type of thing. Drachma? It was... No, it wasn't Drachma. Was it, wasn't it Denarius? Yeah, Denarius. I believe yeah. it was Denarius. Yeah, it was Denarius. Yeah, the Denarius. Yeah, the Denarius. Yep. Yeah, the, the uh, the uh, the the people when they would work, you know, they would only get one Denarius a day, and that would equal one day's worth of uh, uh pay. Mm -hmm. You know, now that Denarius, okay, was equal to about what ten sheep or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one coin with uh, Caesar's uh, image on it. Yeah. You know, it was equal to uh, 10 sheep. And, and, and let me remind you that not only were they underpaying the workers, right, but also toward near, near the end of the Roman Empire, especially during the time of Emperor Nero, um, like I said, with all the wars, Rome got was spread thin. Because remember, Rome had, just like America right now, they got to pay... They got to put money in the military to be in all these different nations. Rome had to pay mercenaries. Mm -hmm. Rome had to pay mercenaries. Rome, when they took over lands, they needed to put money, like the Italian band, the Spanish band. They were all part of Rome. They were the Roman Empire, and you had to what? You had to put money in their, in, in their pockets. You had to, the, the Roman Empire had to spend money for their armors, swords, right? A lot of these parties that the, the, the soldiers was having. So a lot of these things, Rome started to run out of money because you had a lot of corruption. So even that one Daenerys, at a certain time towards the end of Rome, the Daenerys was really not the same value that it was when it first started. 
just like the dollar is not the same, doesn't have the same force that it had when it started. Why? Because America is also, America being a reincarnation of ancient Rome, not only spiritually, you talk about economically. Oh, man. So therefore, the dollar is what? The dollar is going through the same process as the Daenerys. Yep. You know? Yep, the same exact progress, man. It's uh, uh, nothing is new under the sun, man. Um, but I'm going to continue on. Yeah. It says, uh, and, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, right? One denarius for ten sheep, mm -hmm. right? It says, and the sheets of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, mm -hmm. but you have made it a den of thieves. Right, because, remember, and it wasn't because, it wasn't because they were changing the money at the temple. That's not why the Lord got mad, because remember, you... You had constant. You had to change money. I mean, because right. you were under captivity, and there were different uh, currencies. But the main currency was the denarius. So if you came in, in in Israel, which Israel was a state of Rome, so you had Israelites that came. Remember, it says in, in the book of Acts, Israelites came from different regions. Now, in those different regions, like an example, if an Israelite came from uh, uh, from Persia, right? He was dealing with the Persian currency. He had to change the Persian the Persian currency into the denarius. So he would go to the money changes in the temple, right, other Israelites, to get the proper currency to be able to uh, buy, and you know, buy the stuff that he needed while he's staying in Israel. Right. Now, he goes to the changes, and the money changes are giving him false currency, or false exchange, or unjust weight. That's why you have a shot got mad. He was like, hold up, this place was supposed to be a place of prayer. Right. Now, if, if you was doing proper exchange, which the Lord, the whole Bashim Shah is with proper exchange, perfect balance, then there wouldn't have been a problem. But no, instead, you're doing what? False exchange and unbalanced weight. And then that's wickedness and that's abomination. Mm -hmm. So that's what Yahweh Shah was mad about. That's why he called him. He said, now, this is the temple of prayer, but you made it what? Can you hear it again, Bob? Uh, you have made it a den of thieves. That's right, but you have made it a den of thieves, right? So it all became about not only money, but the false exchange of money. Why? Because it was supposed to remain in the barter system. Now, the wickedness got into the barter system, system, and then eventually, you know, it turned into, Esau took it and it turned into, you know, what we know today as credit. You still have some more in the barter system? Um, no. Nah. Well, I wanted to make the point about, yeah. about how, um, when, when, when people used to, because we were, we going to get into, like, how the, how the credit Mm -hmm. uh, came came about also, mm -hmm. you know, how the, how, the, how the barter system went from being, you know, barter to credit. Mm -hmm. Now, back then, okay, the 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 history of when when somebody would have, you know, a lot of substance, the banks would come and they would say, well, we can hold your your uh your your money mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. you know, just let us, you know, pay you, you know, with the 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 the, the, the exchange, mm -hmm. you know, and and people was doing that, yeah, and it, it was it got to the point where a lot of people. Which when they do it nowadays, you know, they put their stuff into the bank and then the bank take all that stuff that you just put in and they just take it somewhere else. Yeah, and then that's that's all, man. They're not supposed to do that. Man, now that's wicked, man. That's what that's the reason why you can go in the bank. You go to the bank and if you try to get all your money out, depending on the substance, the bank the bank uh, is a, is able to tell you, no, we ain't we ain't got your money. Yeah. You can only get, you know, uh, two thirds of your money. Mm-hmm. Because we yep. just ain't got, how the hell, what you mean you ain't got my motherfucking money? Excuse my language. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. but that's wicked. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's when they when they would do that, you know, they, they this is how they started the system. Mm -hmm. You know, they started changing things. You know, they start, you about to make a point? I just want to say, and what's the, uh, the word uh, system? System means trap. So they, it, it was a trap that they started. You know, right. the, the, the barter system go becoming credit. I'll, I'll use that was a trap that they started, man. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they when they did this, you know, they was um they was pretty much getting over on people because a lot of people would come and they was they was they were still okay and they would make be able to make up a lie and say hey uh, that stuff got stolen. Yeah, you know and the insurance policies and stuff like that, you know. But mm -hmm. the thing was that's when they would they would they would say well. We will give you this, you know, in exchange for that. Right. 
and that's that's when the the whole uh, credit uh, stuff started coming coming in uh, fruition from back in uh, ancient history. You know, this 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 system that we're in right now is nothing uh, new, man. You know, as the scriptures say, it's nothing new under the sun. You know, so uh, America has their own way of thought. They actually came up with uh, with the credit system. With the credit system, um, what's that in the scriptures? Uh, it talks about uh, usury. Yeah. Usury. Yeah. Um, well, as a matter of fact, let me say this. You know, before we even go there, you know, because America really, you know, to say that they came up with it, the, the better way really to say is they pretty much just copied it and they grabbed it from from all uh, they, they, the, the elites. Because remember, America was really. The, the sponsors, remember, because, you know, uh, Columbus, he had sponsors. Mm -hmm. And those sponsors, right, going back to uh, Spain, right after the, uh, the Dark Ages, during the Renaissance, those those sponsors, like the uh, king was the King John and Elizabeth, those sponsors, they were descendants of, of people that already had begun, you know what I'm saying, what you call a credit-based system. So, you know... I'm gonna bring the information on before we go well, straight yeah, yeah, to yeah, you got it, you got but it. We bring that because it was something, and I, I've been, you know, through spirit. I had done some research on this years back, and I had always had knowledge, sub, a level of knowledge about it. But you know, through the spirit, man, it made having to make this video to edify the elect. You know, it makes you want to go in there even more, yeah. and uh, uh, and give more details. Now, basically, when you when you're talking about the credit based system. What you want to do, I don't know if brothers are aware. I know brothers, brothers study and all that. You know, brothers are, brothers are aware of um, the Knights Templar. Yeah, if you've ever heard of the Knights Templar, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it would be good for you to, you know, look it up. You know what I'm saying? Go to Google right now, look up the Knights Templar, and read a little bit about the Knights Templar, man. It's, 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 it was a group. Actually, I'm just going to read it, as a matter of fact. Uh... This is, of course, Wikipedia. Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, the History Channel, the History Channel got a, uh, they got a couple shows coming up about the about the Knights Templar, man. So it'd be good to see that. That's right. Uh, 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 that's right. Masonry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. The Knights Templar, Masonry was um, the, the religious, you know, the religious belief. If they were call themselves Christians, but they were really into Freemasonry. And, and, and their main way to, 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 to push the money was through credit. Now, I'm going to read this. This is our uh, history of the Knights Templar. It says, the history of the order of the Knights Templar as a transnational military religious order spans two centuries of the High Middle Ages. The High Middle Ages means what? It means by the, uh, the um, it's, it's really the end of the middle, the end of the Dark Ages and the beginning of the Renaissance. Yep. Because you're talking about the crusade and all that. Yep. You know, those that Edomites call themselves Christians, but they were really Freemasons, man. Now, it says from the orders, it says from the orders founded in the early 12th century to its suppression early in the 14th century. Early in the 14th century. Mm -hmm. Right? It says early 12th century. That's right about when you start to see the decline of uh, uh, Jake, you know, in the middle of the Dark Ages, right? right. And in the 14th century, you talk about Caesar Bourget, right? Right. right? The Bourget family. It says the Knights Templar traced their origins back to shortly after the First Crusade, around 1119. And an Italian nobleman, Ugo de Pagani, from Nocera de Pagani in Campania, southern Italy, or Uges Payans, as, as known in French, collected eight knights, including Godfrey de Saint Omer, and began the order. Their stated mission to protect pilgrims on their journey to visit the holy places. The approach, the approach, that's like it. They approached King Baldwin II of Jerusalem, who allowed him to set up headquarters on the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock. At the center of the mount was understood to occupy the site of the Jewish Temple, known to Christians throughout the Muslim occupation of Jerusalem as the Holy of Holies. You know, it says the Dome of the Rock became a Christian church the Temple of Domini, the Temple of the Lord. So, you know, you can read some more on that. Well, actually, I'm, I'm going to finish this paragraph. It says, um, but the Templars were lodged in the 
in the Aksa Mosque, which was assumed to stand on the site of Solomon's Temple, because the Aksa Mosque was known as the Temple of Solomonis. It was not long before the Knights had encompassed the association in their name. They became known as the Papyrus Comilitones Christi Templique Solomonisi, the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon, which was eventually shortened to Knights Templar. So that's a little bit of history on the Knights Templar. Now, when you go to um, BBC, right? This is, this is an article I got off of BBC. Brothers know what BBC is about. BBC is about the economy. Because remember, the scripture, can you get that out of uh, Revelation? Uh, the, the three and clean forks? Uh, three and clean forks? Yeah. About to shut. God, God. Yeah, I wanted to get the, uh, the definition of, um, what is it, uh, economy also. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Revelation 16 and 13. Gone. It's, a, it's very important. Like I said, brothers know where the BBC is located. The BBC, gone. I can a lot of history coming out. That's right, that's right. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, why means in, in the Holy Spirit. You know, because it's all through Yahweh Bashim and the Holy Spirit that we're able to bring all this edification. You know what I'm saying? Gone. So, um, but right, like I said, the BBC is uh, is a news channel. It's a prominent business news channel located in England, in London, England. Right? You got it up. Yeah. Uh, Genesis sixteen and thirteen. No, Revelation. Re oh, stop here. Yeah. Revelation. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good man. catch. Talk. <laughs> yeah, man. It's all good. Yeah, that's a good catch. Talk. Revelation, uh, sixteen verse thirteen. Right. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs. Come out of the mouth of the dragon. Right, like the dragon is talking about what? It's talking about the Edomite system. You know, it's talking about Esau, the so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. It's talking about his system, the image of the beast. That's what it's talking about, man. That dragon, his power, the EU, NATO, America, all of that. Go ahead. It says, and out of the mouth of the beast. Wait, like the beast is NATO. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. Right. Now, the three unclean spirits is talking about the three power sources of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Now, the first power source is a religious power source, which is the Vatican. That's the first unclean spirit. The second unclean spirit is what? It's uh, the military. The, the military. Now, it's actually the second unclean spirit is the monetary. The monetary unclean spirit, which is what? It's, it's, it's London. It's talking about... London in, in England because everything that has to do with the economy starts in what in London, England. Matter of fact, can you um can you get all uh, uh, Jeremiah? Uh, I think it's 40 says, In thy mother, it speaks about uh, uh mother's mother. Uh, it says Jeremiah 40, yeah, I think it's 40. Uh, so I get I can that mother shall be ashamed. Because it goes, it speaks about, because again, like you said, when, go, when you're dealing with the economy, you're dealing, with, you're dealing with London. The stock market that you have in the United States it really is really based on how trades and products are being moved and how the decisions that are being made in London. Now, why is that? Remember, Lon London and England is where the majority of the elites, you know, resides. The Rothschild, like on the BBC, a lot of times you see on, on Evelyn, the man himself, Evelyn the Rothschild, <laughs> were making an appearance on the, so like they were making a, a special appearance on the BBC, and talk about the future of the economy. And then when he says something, then weeks later you can see all the things that he said happen here in America and across the globe. I got it. Uh, got it? Je I mean Jeremiah, fifty, uh, and twelve. Mm -hmm. Your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be a saint. Mm -hmm. Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and the desert. That's right. Well, shall I read that again? Uh, started, uh, started 10, Uh Jeremiah 50, verse uh, 10. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. Uh huh. That's a good, uh, the, the, the spoils of war, too, man. That's. Then you know we had, probably had to go through that also. That's right. Um, when, when it says uh, uh, Chaldea, it's talking about the elites in this society. You know, the Chaldea 
is the upper echelon Edomites. It's talking about the Illuminati, the Rockefeller, the Rothschild, the DuPont, Gates, all of these dudes. They are the ones that coming up with all these ideas, the unclean, the three unclean fogs, which the first one is the Vatican. That's the spiritual uh, uh, power that Esau has. The second one is uh, London, which is the economy. The third one is Washington, D.C. That's the military. That's where you get all the military decisions. So those are the three. But the one you want to focus on is the second unclean uh, spirit that came out of the dragon like a fog. And that second unclean spirit is talking about what? It's talking about London and the, and the economy. Now, actually, pull up economy right quick before we go the back. The definition for uh, economy right. is the structure or conditions of economic life in a country, area, or period. Mm -hmm. Also, an econo economic system. Okay, it says thrifty and efficient use of material resources, uh, frugality and ex and expenditures, also an instance or a meaning in economizing. Now pull up on uh, just copy paste paste that on um, etym etymology. On what? For what? Etym online. No, no I'm economy. Saying, oh economy. Yeah, economy, yeah, copy paste. Uh, just go to yeah, go to etym online, just type in economy. Because, as you know, with Adam, with Adam online, it breaks down the words. Con, con. You know? Um, the adjective or the noun? The, yeah, go with the noun. Go with the, the, noun, noun. the noun. All right, the noun for um, economy is a household management. That's right. That's the true meaning of the word economy. The true meaning of the word economy is household management. Go, go back to it. Um, household management okay uh thrift manager steward house abode dwelling mm -hmm. uh district near dwelling village mm -hmm. managing manage assign elope take i love to read our uh the root words the root words of uh, burgundy uh it says uh from pi root week Mm -hmm. It says clan, mm -hmm. uh, no most, uh, managing, managing mm -hmm. from ne mean manage, okay, from power group, mean, assign, a low take. Right, it's clan management, you know, uh, the uh, weak and, um, and him. So when you combine those, you, you know, you got economy, it's, you know, household management or clan. What's a clan? A clan is it's your house, just like. The nation of Israel is a clan, you know, so that's what it's talking about. It's the management of the clan, and the management of the clan is through trades, man. Yeah. So knowing the trades, knowing the currency, having a currency is an important thing as a nation. That's why even in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have the currency. See, money, that's why the scripture said, for the love of money is the root of evil. But a lot of the Christians always mess that up and say, money is the root of all evil. Yeah. No, money, money is eternal. Why? Because the Heavenly Father has set up money to be what? A form of what? Of trade. You know, it's all about give and take and trade. And the Heavenly Father believes in trade. Now, now that we got uh, economy, household management, now, let's go back to Jeremiah 50 and 10, Buck Shaw. Uh, Jeremiah 50 and 10. And child dear shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. Chaldea being a spoiler is talking about the elites of the society. When you go back to Psalms, it says that what? The Lord is going to preserve the elites so that we can go and grab them up and put shackles on them, right? And put them in slavery. Go ahead. It says, because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O ye destroyers of my inheritance. Right, and putting shackles on the elites, that comes with a lot of things. It comes with what? It comes with money. It comes with all the, the gold and silver, the cattle, everything that they they hoarded, man. All the riches that the Rothschilds hoarded, the, the, the Rockefeller, all these elites. They're going to point out, they're going to point out, what, well, actually, they, don't, they won't even have to because with the spiritual powers and, our, and the angels, we're going to know where all the riches are, man. Yep. We're going to grab all. That's what it means, spoils, man. Yep. Spoils is when you go out and you take a man and you take his riches and all of them become what? Your possession. I got a uh, scripture, right. Proverbs 28 and uh, 8. He that by usury and unjust gain mm -hmm. increases his substance. Mm -hmm. By usury and unjust gain increases his substance. 
Now, the thing with usury, which we're going to get that, you got to understand that it, it, usury is something, actually, we're going to get more details on that because when you go over usury, there, there's a law on that that says that you're not supposed to, to there's certain things you could do to, to the nations that you're not supposed to do to yourself, yeah. uh, to, to your brother. To your brother. You know what I'm saying? So, really, the Lord is talking about within, within the nation of Israel. And we're going to go into more detail. Hold, hold that. Hold it usually. Don't, don't let that go hold that. Because it goes with the nice Templar. It actually speaks about the usury with the nice Templar. Now, let's finish our Jeremiah 50, uh, 10 through, uh, through 12. Gone, gone. It says, um, All ye destroyers of mine heritage, because you are grown fat, is the heifer at grass, and bellow is bulls. Mm -hmm. Your mother shall be sore confounded. See that bear you shall be a saint. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. But now we know the spirit ultimately is talking about destruction, World War III, and thermonuclear missiles. But the mother, of course, that's talking about England. Because England is the mother of America. Because it's through England that what the 13th color of uh, the 13th colony? It's through England when the 13th colony branched off from what King King George the Third and came to this uh, came to this land. Now that's that was the that's how America was born, 1776, right? Rebelling against King George and having what independence. Now England is known for what you know the economy going going back to the scriptures. So the whole dollar, the which which the currency in England is the pound. You just look at the pound right now. The pound is trash. The pound is strategy because at first the pound, the pound was strong, and then the pound joined, they joined the pound with the what with the EU, remember? And then when that didn't work out, they had what was called a Brexit. Now, now that they had the Brexit, the EU and the European the European unions, they don't they decided that, hey, you know what, since you decided to go back to using the pound again, right, as your main currency, now the trades, your money is not gonna be worth what it once was. So now you're going to have to use twice as much pound to get the same type of merchandise that you got in the past. So the pound is totally collapsing. That's why the economy in England is collapsing. Same thing with the dollar, man. The dollar is collapsing, man. That's why you buy, you know, you got these phone posits and Air Force, Air Force Air Jordans at $500. Why do you think that is, man? They don't sell those shoes for that price anywhere else but in places, anywhere else but in the Western Hemisphere, man. Why? Because the economy is collapsing. Yeah. When you go to um, all of these uh, countries, man, they all have uh, debt clocks, you know? Yeah. Now, America, debt clock is what? I don't even... I'm 20, a, 20, 20, <laughs> 20, 23 now, 23 trillion. I think it went, went up to 23 trillion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the debt clock is 20. 20. Okay, well, hey. We got a little AC here, but hey, man. But remember, this is 20, this is the U.S. national debt. But when you add the derivatives, which is the interest on the, interest on the charge, it really, it really goes back to $300 trillion. Right. $300 trillion if you add the derivatives, which, which would be referred to as uh, uh, interest. Now, America is what? $20 trillion? Yeah. The economy is, is trash here, man. Well, not only that, America, see, this is the thing. It's, America's debt is twenty trillion, but their GDP is three billion. Right. That's a problem. It's like you. It's like you, owning brother. It's like it's like you, owning a million dollars, but you only make sixty thousand a year. <laughs> and every time you gotta borrow money, yeah, just to survive. So as the million dollar becomes two million dollars and it becomes three million dollars, you still making sixty thousand a year. And you're talking about buying paying back the debt. Yeah. You can't, man. It's impossible. Yeah. But this is all based this is all because of what? Because Esau, being as wicked as he is and being corrupt, went with that credit based system. Yeah. And it's it's to the point now where people who have this uh false illusion that you're doing good if you if you uh, got some type of debt. Nah, that's you know you got you got a credit card. Yeah. You know you got a, a house, which your house you 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 had to go get a loan. Mm -hmm. You know you got a car, you had to go get a loan for it. That's right. You know. And, and one thing that just came up, brothers have to remember, 
America, America, uh, uh, the credit that America gets, because America doesn't have the money, but the, the money that America gets is really credit, uh, borrow money from the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. Now, the Federal Reserve is what? The Federal Reserve is a private entity that belongs to the elites of what? The elites of the, uh, 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 the Rothschild, the Rothschild and the Rockefeller. The, that's what the Federal Reserve is. It's not an American uh, governmental institution. It's a privately owned institution located in here in America that, and that's, that pretty much lends money to America so that America could buy weapons. Just like recently, Donald Trump just signed a bill to spend four, what was that, four billion dollars on weapons from Boeing, Boeing and uh, uh, what's that, Lockheed Martin, Boeing and Lock, Lockheed Martin. Four billion dollars. Where did he get the money? He got the money from the Federal Reserve, and that added to. Uh, uh, it says it added. It, you know, of course, it was added to the national debt. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about here. You borrow, you buying weapons for money that you don't have. Yeah. Yeah. That's the credit base. Yeah. That's the credit base system. Yep. Now let me go back to uh, some more of this because uh, we're gonna nice go into usury. I'm gonna go back to um, usually. So hold up. This is our. This is the BBC. I'm seeing on my phone. I don't know if you can see it. So I'll email uh, the article. BBC. BBC News. It says the warrior monks who invented. Who, this is the title. The warrior monks who invented banking. Right. Mm -hmm. Because banking, the banking system. That's where you get credit. Right. Now, check this out. It says on on London's busy. Fleet Street, opposite Chancery Lane, is a stone arch through which anyone may step and travel back in time. A quiet courtyard houses houses a strange circular chapel and a statue of two knights sharing a single horse. The chapel is Temple Church, consecrated in 1185 as the London home of the Knights Templar. But but Temple Church is not just an important architectural, our architectural, historical, and religious site. It is also London's first bank. The Knights Templar were warriors monk, a religious order with a theologically inspired hierarchy, mission statement, and code of ethics, but also heavily armed and dedicated to holy war. Now, it says, how did they get into the banking game? It says, uh, so like, there you go. Right here, it says, 50 things that made the modern, 50 things that made the modern economy. And I'm going to go right here. It says, the Templars dedicated themselves to the defense of Christian pilgrims to Jerusalem. The city had been captured by the first crusade in 1099, and pilgrims began to scream. Traveling thousands of miles across Europe, those pilgrims needed to somehow fund months of food and transport and accommodation mm -hmm. yet avoid carrying huge sums of cash around because that would have made them a target for robbers right yeah, you know but you're like the robin hood yeah. you know robin hood would wait in the, in the trees and stuff yeah. and you know rob them and shit. Uh, so caravans caravans uh, you uh nowadays with the, the bridge <laughs> 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 it hasn't changed brother it's all spiritual. So now since they didn't want to carry all that money because they, they had fears of being a uh, wife, right? It says, fortunately, the Templars had that covered. A pilgrim could leave his cash at Temple Church in London and withdraw it in Jerusalem. Mm. So you leave your cash in London, you travel to Jerusalem, and you withdraw the money in, uh, in, in Jerusalem. Yeah. So how did your cash go from London to Jerusalem when it didn't travel with you? Yeah. Now it says, it says, um, instead of carrying money, he would carry a letter of credit. The Knights Templar were the Western Union of the Crusades. See that? Instead of carrying his cash, he would carry a letter of credit. Right? What is credit? You got it? Uh, slot here. Uh, the word credit, uh, I just had it right here. Credit, the ability of a customer to obtain goods or services before payment. See that? 
That's what it is. Obtain good and services before payment. Yep. That yeah. is how. That's not. That's not how it's supposed to be yeah. Uh, done. Yeah. You got to pay and then receive the good. Yeah. How in the world do you receive the goods before payment, man? Yeah. That puts you in debt, man. And what did the scripture say about, about uh, 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 debt? Can, can you get that? The borrower is uh, slave to the... The borrower is slave to the... To the lender? To the lender. Uh, I'm not, I think it's... Is it the Proverbs? The something, Proverbs. Something, to, something to that effect. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, that's borrower. Lender. Uh, this is uh, Proverbs 22 yep. and 7. Yep. The rich rules over the poor, uh -huh. and the borrower is servant to the lender. Right, the borrower is servant to, to the lender. So when you start to borrow money, then you in, you in debt, man. You become a slave. So credit was what? Credit is when, when you go out and say, all right, let me get, I want a substance, a car, whatever it is, mm -hmm. then... But I'm giving you a note that says that I will have the money to pay later on. Now, it puts you in a bond because what if something happens to that money later on and you don't have the money? Yeah. Now, your ass has got to pay more than what the, the, uh, the product actually was. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's how they set it up. Yep. Yeah. So that's why you got to come up with the money up front. You got to have the money up front. That's the trade. That's the barter system. Bring the money up front and get the good. That's how you eliminate greed, man. Yeah. You will only receive what you got. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have money, but you want something that you cannot afford, what do you do? Take credit. So Esau bought upon credit to feed on the greed of what? Of Jake, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because Esau is already a greedy bastard. Yeah. And he knew that a lot of you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans had greed in you, Israelites, man. So he knew that system would have been a perfect, would have been, was going to be a perfect trap, you know what I'm saying, for you Israelites, man. Yep. Yeah. And them uh, fucking Jewish rats, man, the, you know, man. some of the, the worst uh, loan socks, man. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the ways how they how they ended up getting rich, man. That's right. You know, because they had a major uh, area, okay, where if you had to, if you wanted to go, okay, through their land, okay, mm -hmm. with Kazaria, Okay, you yeah. have to you yeah. have to, to pay triple the amount, okay, to go through the shortcut, whereas though like if you wanted to go through the the uh the long way, okay, it probably would take you longer and more money, okay? Mm -hmm. And your uh the, the your caravan probably get robbed or stolen. Yeah. Yeah. So you had to go through there and pay pay off more money, man. Absolutely. And that's how they ended up getting more, you know, getting uh rich how they are, man, from off of usury. Yeah, it's gonna say this. Check this out. Uh, continue. It says, but but that sister says, uh, we don't actually know how the Templar made this system work and protected themselves against fraud. Was there a secret? Was there a secret code verifying the document and the traveler's identity? Right, because he could have. It just could have been a, 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 somebody faking. Now the next Templar did much more than transfer money across long distances, as William. Goldsman describes in his book, Money Changes Everything, they provided a range of recognizably modern financial services. If you wanted to buy a nice island off the west coast of France, as King Henry III of England did in the 1200s with the island of Oleron, northwest of Bordeaux, the Templars could broker the deal. What is a broker? In the Wall Street, uh, 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 in the Wall Street, right? right you right. have you have a, a, a Wall Street broker, like um, I don't know if brothers know about uh, Max Kaiser, uh, Western Television. He was one of the first original uh, brokers. The brokers that the, the motherfuckers that's running around like that crazy dogs in, in uh, Wall Street, right? With the numbers and shit, the numbers showing, yeah. and they sweating, and they ain't got their papers on, and and nigga, those are the brokers, right? So that goes back to the to the nice tip farm, man. <laughs> So it says, uh, let me see if I can get some more points because I don't want to read the whole thing. Because uh, there, there was another spot where they talked about usury, and that's where you want to go to. Oh, there you go. It says, sophisticated has changed, but at this particular fair, gossip was starting to spread about an Italian merchant who was there and making a fortune. He bought and sold nothing. All he had 
was a desk and an inkstand. They and it's this, this, you know, that's the Italian right here. That's the dude that is talking about going back to the nice Templar and how you had this economy, right? Because what do you have a dollar? A dollar is a talisman when you have what is drawn with ink, right? You're not, you're not supposed to draw ink in the money. Money is gold, silver, and cattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They said this dude that says he bought and sold nothing. All he had was a desk and an inkstand. Day after day, he sat there receiving other merchants and signing their pieces of paper and somehow becoming very rich. You see that? Yeah. The locals were very suspicious. But to a new international elite of Europe's great merchant houses, the elites, the Illuminati's, his activities were perfectly, perfectly legitimate. He was buying and selling debt. See, <laughs> buying and selling, they're talking about the 1200s. Yeah. He was buying and selling debt, and in doing so, he was creating enormous e economic value. So it goes on and it goes on and on, and I think later on, it, hey, go right here. A merchant from, from Lyon who wanted to buy, say, Florentine wool could go to this banker and borrow something called a bill of exchange. This was a credit note, an IOU, but it was not denominated in the French livre or Florentine lyric. Its value was expressed in the e ECU, the mark, a private currency used by this international network of bankers. So, but that's pretty much the point. That's pretty much the point. And then when you read later on, it, it goes into what? It goes into um, how religiously, it goes into how, uh, actually, I know exactly where you go. If we go into usury, we probably bring that right quick. We don't want to make this too long. But uh, I want to go to the part of usury. Uh, so, the items is give me one second. It's a lot of information. They go bankers. Uh... Yeah. yeah, this topic, man, like, man, you could be on this this thing for, for long, man, because this yeah. history of money, yeah. you know, even the history of religion and all religion. that stuff, man, it's, it's, it gets deep, man. That's right, you know? man, this is the point. You got the user ready? Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. check this out. It said, the Knights' involvement in banking grew over time into a new basis for money. As Templars became increasingly involved in banking activities, one indication of their powerful political connections is that the Templars' involvement in usury did not lead to moral controversy within the order of the church at large. Why is that? Because it says, officially the idea of lending money in return for interest was forbidden by the church. You know, and we're going to get the law on that. It was forgiven, forbidden by the church. But the order sidestepped this with clever loopholes. When's the last time you heard about loopholes? The economy in America. Loopholes in the stock market, right? And tax taxation, loopholes in taxation. Such as a stipulation that the Templars retain the rights to the production of mortgage property. What's a mortgage? Brothers know what a mortgage is. It's a death note. You get this house, a house that you cannot afford. Yeah. And the man that's selling the house is getting supremely rich because not only are you buying a house, but you're buying interest on the house. Right? It says, as one of it, it says, or uh, as one Templar researcher put it, since they weren't allowed to ch to charge interest, they charge rent instead. So that's how they make money. So now it goes into hit usually that church. So they're calling themselves Christians. So of course they they was like, okay. You're not supposed to do usually, yeah. but the nice Templar did usually because they were in control. They started this credit thing, and if the Most High how about you know, shall allow Esau, you know, to go that route. To show the wickedness and how he deals with trades. Now you yeah, got yeah, Randy, man. You got it, man. Um, I got the definition for usury: the illegal action or practice of lending money at unreasonably high rates of interest. <laughs> you know, because all that stuff is basically word of mouth. You know, you can actually be be somebody that's about to, you know, pay your your stuff, but then, you know, some shit start happening to you. You know, and 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 you can't pay it. But the biggest uh, people, you know, which which are uh, doing this is, is America, man. Mm -hmm. You know, America is, um, you know, they, 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 the, the economy, okay, the, the, the money that's being put out mm -hmm. compared to the money that's coming in mm -hmm. is, 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 is exceeding, man, you know. 
America always put up this money to, to fund wars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that just adds up into this uh this debt, you know? That's right. And and um when you go into the, the, the US debt plot, you know, just looking at all the stuff that's on there, uh people are born into debt. Yeah. You know, you got uh the the, the uh college loans, social security, Medicaid. Which D Donald Trump is talking about doing away with that? Yeah, hey, welfare and all that. Welfare, man, which, which is wonderful. I mean, all the way. Hey, you will not. Yeah. We've been waiting for that welfare to get cut out, man. Yep. Cause you niggas, man, you niggas and you spacey wetbacks that want to continue to be fed by the serpent, like the scripture said in Revelation. Yeah, my shit want to get that right quick. Yeah. Actually, I'm gonna get it. Uh, the scripture said in Revelation that the serpent, which is Esau, was just gonna feed you for a moment, man. So no. now the serpent's gonna cut off their welfare. This is Revelation chapter 12. Uh, it's like, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, 14, it says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. Now, it's talking, the woman is talking about the nation of Israel flying into the wilderness. It's talking about when we were besieged in 70 AD. And then, and then it skips and it says, and her place, meaning her determined place to be captive right here in America. When we got picked up in the west coast of, uh, on the west coast of Africa, and also um, our, our brothers from the northern kingdom, the Spanish and Native Americans, they were already here in, uh, in South America. When, when Judah Benjamin Lee got. Uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, so like it got picked up and brought here. The scripture said to be nourished right from the face of the serpent. The serpent is Esau. The nourishment is that welfare. It said for time and times. Time is 100. Times is 200. And it says in half the time, which is 50. So 350 years, you'll be nourished. What? You've been taken care of. Although he's killing you, he's still, he's still going to feed you, right? And those 350 years, it started to end with Abba Bibbins, right? Which we know through spirit to be Elijah and John the Baptist started, you know, through him, the whole Bash you know, shot push to shoot to us. Then that's when what? Esau started to show what? His 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 head, man. That's when you have the, the, the wax riots, the 92 riots, and now you're gonna have the ultimate race wars, man. Right. The welfare is getting cut out. The serpent is gonna start nourishing the woman, man. Yep. Okay. Um uh the the book of Exodus, the twenty second chapter, it goes into like, you know, how the laws about the property and you know how uh if a if a man lost you know during the time of the barter system if he lost certain things mm -hmm. what would happen yeah. so the lord already made the law perfect from from the beginning That's it's right. just that esau wants to go ahead and, and add on to the laws and 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 now we have this confusion that we have now you That's know because right. he's, he's dealing with a credit-based system so he putting jake on the trap now let me be let me read some scriptures about usury because you know we have to understand uh, usury and how it works, right? Now this is uh, Exodus, Exodus twenty two and twenty five. It says, "If thou, if thou lend money to any of my people, so like, if Exodus twenty two and twenty five, if thou lend money to any of my people that is poor body, thou shalt not be to him as an usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury, right?" Yeah. Now it says, take Leviticus, uh, no, not Leviticus, uh, Deuteronomy 23 and 19. It says, thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Remember, Moses is talking to the Israelites. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Now, this is now this is the kick. This is the flip side. Deuteronomy 23 and 20. Unto a stranger. Thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury. Yeah. That the Lord thy power may bless thee in all, in all that thou sittest thine hand to in the land where thou goest to possess it. So we, we're not supposed to, to, to lend, uh, uh, to do trades and put interest when we're dealing with brothers or Israelites, yeah. Yeah. amongst Israelites. The law is we're not supposed to put no interest when we make deals. You know, we do trades in our barter system. Right, right. We're in a barter system among Israelites. But we can put usury 
if we're dealing with the other nations. Right. Now, somebody would say, well, well, why is that? Well, this is the reason why. Uh, you got Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 76. Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 76 is the reason why you can do, you cannot do usury to your brother, which that's unlawful, but you can do usury to the other nation. This is the reason why, right? Deuteronomy 76. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. What? The Lord thy God, Yahweh Shemuel Asai, has chosen you to be a special people unto himself. Uh -huh. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's the key. Because we are above the nations. That's yeah. why we can put usury upon them. Because yeah. we are above them. Mm -hmm. But us as Israelites, we are we are Israelites. So we yeah. not that's the that's the key. Because the Lord doesn't believe in equality of nations, right? Right. So that's, but Esau has used his usury, he put interest on this, right? He's put interest on it. But the, that's right, brother. That's right, that's right. Usury, Esau has put usury on this, and the way he's gone about it, now, first of all, Esau's supposed to be our brother, isn't he? Right? Esau and Jacob. So put usury on Jacob, that, that, that's going off. You're doing it to your brother, right? But the scriptures say what? Solomon said in um, uh, Sons of Solomon and what? Uh, my mother's sons had made me the keepers of his vineyard. Right. You know, slaves. Right. We are the slaves of our mother's son. What is he talking about? He's talking about Rebecca. Because Esau's mother was Rebecca. Right. So he wasn't supposed to do these things to us, man. Right. Now, and, not, and like your brother said, the credit part where he gives you an item before, he gives you an item that you cannot afford. Because he knows you won't be able to pay that shit back, man. Yeah. That's credit, man. That's not economy, man. That's not that's not just weight. That's not balance, man. Yep. It brings extreme poverty, and that's why you see the famine that's going on around the world, man. Yep. I got a scripture. Um, Matthew 22, verse 15. On down, it says, uh, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Mm -hmm. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of Yahweh in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, mm -hmm. for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Mm -hmm. But Yahweh shall perceive their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me? Ye hypocrites, mm -hmm. show me the tribute money, and they brought him unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Who's whose is this image and superscription? Okay? Now, when the brother was just saying, you know, about you know Esau, Esau, you know, he's technically he he, he not bound by these laws, you know, but but the fact that he picked up this Bible and make yeah. it seem like he, you know, this is his book, yeah. now you're bound by these laws. That's right. You know? Right. You 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 might as well you might as well uh, pick up this Bible, man. Right. If this book ain't for you, you 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 uh you Edomites, man. Right. You know. But the thing is, while we while we here in this home, you know, the it, it, the, 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 the 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 money, it, this shit don't really have no value, man. Nah. You know, nah. we, we 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 gotta uh you know uh pay rent and shit. You know what the bro was just going into earlier. Yeah. You know, that's that's. Fucking uh, usury and you know credit and all, you know, all type of bullshit yeah, with that man. It, it is because, like 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 they say, the Knights Templar was you know Edomites. They say, well, since we can't have put interest on it, we gonna have them pay rent. Why? Because if you you pay rent on an apartment forever, ultimately you paying for you paying a hundred times what the land mass is actually worth. Yeah, <laughs> that's wicked, man. That is what you're not supposed to pay on the land eternally, bro. You're supposed to just make one payment on the land, and that's it, man. Yeah. And own your stuff, man. You know, you we supposed to inherit things, man. Okay. You 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 inherit in debt in this society. That's right. You know, that's why this place gotta go, man. One of the reasons why this place gotta yeah. go. Oh, right. um, I got the next uh, verse. They said unto him, Caesar's, right? Who, he said, whose who's is this image and who's and, uh, and superscription? You look on the, the front of the dollar bill, who's on there? All these 
these presidents that that had slaves, okay? Yep. It says, uh, they say unto him, Caesar, then said he unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, mm -hmm. and unto Yahweh the things that are Yahweh's. Mm -hmm. You know? So so at the end of the day, this money, this all the dollar bill about to collapse. Okay? America is uh, that the, the thick clay. That's right. You know? And yeah. uh have a cook uh, the second chapter, man. The Daniels. That's that's Daniel? Yeah, Daniels, the second chapter. Yeah, yeah, I believe Habakkuk says uh, the thing. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. So I can, yeah, right, absolutely. Right. Habakkuk also said that 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 layer of that stuff is thick clay. That's mm -hmm. right. Yep. Yeah. It's the same clay. That's right. Brother's right. That's the uh, same clay that uh, Daniel was talking about in uh, Daniel's second chapter. Yep. In that statue. Yep. I got it. I got it. Yeah. It, it goes with the scripture. Um, uh, it goes with the lesson. Uh, Habakkuk 2 and uh, 6. So not all these take up a parable against him and a taunt and proverb against him and say woe to him that increases that which is not his. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when we read about the Italian merchant mm -hmm. and how they said he got stupidly rich by what? He bought and sold nothing? Yeah. But he made money how to what? How to uh, 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 out of uh, uh, giving a bill of, a bill of exchange? Mm -hmm. So he was he was he was professing to have something that he didn't have every time. That's how he made money. Yep. It yep. says, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. Mm -hmm. How long? And to him that laid it himself with thick clay. That's right. You know, and that's that's what America is doing, man. You know, they 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 you, you, you miss a payment on a car or something like that, you know, and they just take it. Okay? Uh the, the Israelites, you know, ultimately, because right. we're not Esau's man. We're the, we're how about some y'all size, man? That's right. You know. That's right. And and he's getting rich off the blood, sweat, and tears of our people. Okay. That's the the the, the uh, bill that just got passed. You know, that ain't you you, you uh, niggas think that that's helping y'all out, man? That ain't helping y'all out, man. Wow. You know, you, uh, we we giving you more income tax for yeah. your child. Yeah. There's a certain tax brackets, man. It's all about tax brackets. And those tax brackets, when they're talking about middle class income and, uh, and middle class, you, a lot of you niggas ain't middle class. A lot of you niggas are what? Lower, lower, uh, lower middle class, just straight up poor. Only a few of us, you know, uh, 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 upper, crust, uh, upper crust Negroes and lower class, um, uh, lower middle class. So a lot of things don't even fall in that bracket, man. You know, but again, he's you know trying to revitalize uh, America and all that. Trying to trying to revitalize America and all that. But hey, you know what? It's not gonna happen. You know, Jeremiah 50, 51 says that what we would have healed Babylon, but Babylon is not healed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Babylon, which is America, is not healed, man. Yeah. Um, we was going into the um, the the the, the credit. All that all that is missing. You know, right now, because you know we gotta get the um. The, the, the scripture in um, uh, Revelation 13. Come on, come on. Yeah, we, you know, I don't want to have it too long, yeah, you know. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. this, uh, this lesson, man, hey, it's a lot of uh, meat. <laughs> a lot. A lot of meat, a lot of information. Like I said, if we, if we hit all all the points, we just, you know, it'll be, we'll go on for hours and hours. Yeah. You know? um, you, you got a scripture? You got it out. Uh, this is um Silver Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, verse 8. It says, Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches <clears> got by <throat> deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. You know, I'm sure the brother you had it, right? Yeah, 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 I had yeah. that out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's all through spirit. It says, Because of unrighteous dealings. We're talking about credit based system, that's an unrighteous, those are unrighteous dealings. The Lord calls that unjust weights and an unjust balance. You know, it says, injuries and riches got by deceit. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. That's why Esau's kingdom, what was that, uh, uh, Second Ezra 6 and 7? If I can get that, uh, this is Second Ezra chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 7, it says, Then answered out and said, What shall be the part in the sudden of the times, or when shall he shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed. And he said unto me, 
from Abraham, Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So that's the kingdom being translated. Why? Because of uh, unrighteous dealings, you know, on all types of ways, not just on a monetary level, you know, physical level, captivity, yep. mental level, mental oppression, spiritual oppression. That's why the translation is happening, right? Yeah. Yahweh Bashimel Shah is flipping this thing around, right? Yeah, this ain't no life, man. You know, being uh, subject onto payments. Yeah. You know, this ain't no life, man. You know, yeah. if you don't if you don't work, you don't eat you know, in this eat? society. You know, as you know, you know, when this society comes crashing, mm -hmm. you know, which is going to crash, the dollar bill is going to collapse. That's right. Okay. When it when it's come crashing, man, you know, it's you know, of course we're going to be moving through the spirit of Yahweh of Yahweh mm -hmm. but the brother said that you know it's going to go back to a barter based yeah. type Absolutely. of uh, system. Absolutely. You know, and at the end of the day, you're going to be trading your skills if you got some skills. For some type of money, man. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't want to accept that chip. Now, I was uh, saying earlier, because what America does is they like to set up these nice, uh, what they call condominiums mm -hmm. in the in the nicest part of town. Okay, mm -hmm. all that is missing is is just one big uh, uh, terrorist attack to happen. Okay. In a, in a you know pocket nuke to happen in one of these cities, man. Natural disasters, um, biological weapons. Yeah, bi being, oh my god! Being, you know, being released, <laughs> all that, man. That's all you need. When, when, shut when, the whole shit down. When that uh, the hurricane, sports. when that hurricane um happened in uh Florida, uh, Florida, no, uh, Houston, Houston, yeah. Houston. When when it happened in Houston, yeah. uh, the gas prices went went up. Yeah, it's not because the gas prices. Uh, gas has been uh, gas is more expensive. Mm -hmm. It's because the dollar bill is is ain't worth shit no more, man. That's right. You know, that's that's when when, when you go to a store and you see oh you know uh, something might be a dollar today, okay, but then you go in there the next day and that shit two dollars. That's not because the, the stuff got expensive. That's because the dollar bill ain't shit, man. That's right. The dollar bill is losing its value. Now, right. when when a terrorist attack was to happen, okay, which that's you know that's uh, don't, what the brother was saying. That's that's going to happen, and and all that's missing is, you know, uh, what what uh, uh the the condominiums that they building. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got a lot of businesses that they set up in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got people that end up passing away. Mm -hmm. That's going to lose the, the dollar bill is going to lose its value, man. That's right. And and then what they gonna say? Oh, we gotta find out who did this attack. <laughs> you know? So yeah. we gotta have this, you gotta have this chip. Oh, you lose your credit card. You gotta have this chip. Okay, so I'm gonna get this scripture. That's right. Um that uh Revelation 13 and uh 16. Mm -hmm. It says that he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor. So actually started on uh, the yep. It says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Right. Part of the image of the beast is uh their credit-based system. That's why people believe in uh borrowing money. People believe in uh building their credit. You know, I always I always be beefing with people, man. I beef with the rib. Oh, you ain't building up your credit. Because she bought she she believes in the image of the beast, man. She believes in building her fucking credit, man, so she can get herself into bigger debts. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about my credit because all the credit, all building up my credit means is going to put me in a situation where I'm going to go and, and, and get a bigger debt. When the Lord's Prayer said, well, forgive me, Lord, of my debts as I forgive my debt to us. Because the Lord don't want us to be in no, in no damn debt, man. Yeah. Go ahead, it I says, all right, and he, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Right. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, because a lot of these people that are rich, you know, they're going to be the ones who, who are promoting this uh, this uh, chip also, man. Right. Which would be the new currency. You know, yep. that, that's, that ultimately, the reason why Esau set up the credit, a credit-based system so that it would lead 
to a massive amount of thick clay or debt, which eventually would, you know, if you got debt, you got to pay it, mm-hmm. which eventually would, would make sure it would, would collapse the world's economy and bring forth the microchip. That's why he went with the credit-based system, to set up, to ultimately set up the microchip, man, which is the yeah. mark of the beast, right? It says, uh, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Mm-hmm. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, mm-hmm. and his number is six hundred three score and six. That's right. You know, three hundred three score and six. In the Greek, that's shy size stigma. You know, and it goes into um, the stigma part. It, it goes, Kasha means six. Psi means, uh, 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 not, Sha means 600. Psi means 60. And stigma means six. That's where you get 666. And the stigma means, stigma means an incision or a cut, a puncture. That's what stigma means. Stigma means to puncture through, through the skin. And when you look at what's being punctured, it's the microchip, the, the, the RFID microchip. Yep. That's going to be that currency. Instead of, hey, hey, remember, remember what the next Templar said? Instead of you walking around with cash and meanwhile, mm-hmm. you got to keep finding ways for your cash to move with you, right? Yep. Well, the best way, the, the new way now is to have your cash being what? Implemented uh, uh, in binary codes, numbers, yep. and a microchip you put in your hand. Yep. You know? Meaning you're still walking around and you say you have substance, but you don't. Yeah. All you have is numbers that say that that's the substance that you have. Yeah. And then you're going to go and do trades with that. When the scripture said the barter system is bring your substance and I will bring the, the product. And we will exchange yeah. right there on the spot. Yep. So nobody's going to get mad. You know, you're not going to like say, oh, I got this when I really don't. Mm-hmm. Because it brings wickedness, man. Yep. Okay. It's all, it's all. You know, they, they, they're stealing the goods right from under you, man. That's right. You know, right in your sight, and you can't do anything. That's right. You know, Esau is is playing as though he's God, you know. He's, he's you know, treating us like we're cattle, mm-hmm. you know, like we're the livestock, you know. And anybody who accepts that chip, man, you you just gone, man. <laughs> you, 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 you just stupid, man. Well, that means you worship the image and his mark, yeah. you know. And but the Lord said, uh, let me get this from this final scripture, brother. Uh, this is uh, Revelation. Uh, so like this is Revelation chapter fifteen and two. It says, and I saw as it were, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark. And over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the hops of your how about shot. Yeah. That's talking about the elect, the elect, you know, the one, the one third, one hundred and forty-four thousand, and the remaining of the one third elect of your how about shot. You know, so us hopeful elect, hopefully be a part of that number. Scripture says that what we will have victory over the image of the beast, which is in this particular topic. You know, we talking about part of the image of the beast, which is the credit-based system, right? right? which is wicked as hell, and then the mark, which is the ultimate form of that credit-based system, being able to overcome that and have victory over that man, through the spirit of power of Jehovah Hashem Yahushua, and it says to stand on the sea of glass. The sea of glass is talking about what the ozone layer, man, when Jehovah Hashem Yahushua through these so-called UFOs, which are really called the chariots of Israel, when we get delivered out of here, man, and we're in the chariots, you know, singing, singing the glory and power of Jehovah Hashem Yahushua, Watching the destruction of America from what? On the other side of the ozone layer, man. That's what that's the sea of glass. So that's what we're waiting on, man. Yep. And we ain't worried about this money. You know, the money the dollar bill about to collapse. That's you right. know? That's right. Uh, what what good is that tax bill without no dollar, you know, without the dollar bill being dead? Hey, you got um if we could have went into bricks. Yeah, into bricks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah the Bitcoin, all that stuff is, is it's trash. Bitcoins and all that. Bit, Bitcoins is nothing but a distraction. Cryptocurrency yeah. is nothing but a distraction because at the end of the day, the people who follow 
the way to the Knights Templar, which are the same people, the, the elites of the uh, Edomite society. You call them the Illuminati. Some people call them the globalists. Uh, the Walchild, the Rockefeller. They decide if your economy will stand in the trade or not. The yeah. only reason why Bitcoin is rising is because the elites are allowing Bitcoin to rise. Yeah. If the elites don't want Bitcoin and all these cryptocurrency to rise, they can they will make sure it don't rise because the the, 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 the coin or the currency rises because what they take value in trade. But if the people who own the gold and silver don't decide to not recognize Bitcoin, decide to not recognize all, all these cryptocurrencies, then it's not gonna rise. Yeah. It's all in the power of the elites. They control the, the, this economy, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. So with that, man, what? you know, hopefully this was edifying, man. Huh. You know, uh, we want to give all praises, oh, honor, and right. glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Right. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great right. Millstone. That's right. And it's the Shisha Shalom to the Akim out here that's right. doing the pushing work in truth and sincerity. Right. The ones that's doing this work of the hopeful elect, man. We almost right. out of here, man. That's right. Fuck this system. That's right. Hey, you how about shit me on the shop block the thumb? But I shouldn't walk with dust, man. Right. Oh, shit. Oh.